Hello, welcome to Star Wars Belt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman speaking, and today we're in the home studio. We've got a guest in, well, do we have a guest in the studio? <laughs> Not really. We've got the co-owner, <laughs> the co-proprietor of the studio. <laughs> he usually has to sit outside and, and like welcome people who get who come into the house and then just like hear some mufflings through the walls, I suppose. Is, is that is that what it is? Hang on, Andrew, before you answer, I'll introduce you. Okay. Uh, it is my partner, my... Baby mama, <laughs> uh, all those things. Cat O'Brien, hello. Hello, how you going? Good, welcome. Thank you. Have I gone into like host mode now? You have, it's really weird, but I like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you listen to, you listen, you don't listen to all of them, but you listen to some of them, so. I have to say that I have listened to quite a few of your podcasts, so I'm feeling a little bit um, underprepared that I would have liked to have prepared a little bit more before coming in. Uh, some people are very prepared. Dale, who was on a few weeks ago, brought a whole bunch of stuff and uh, Cam always has a few notes and stuff up his sleeve, but other people just sort of come in and wing it. Um, people like Catherine and Andy who have you know, been on a few times, they just come in and wing it pretty good. You know, I don't know. We have people who are pretty knowledgeable. We've had Steele and Tracy and people like that on who can just who have their own podcasts and stuff. Mm. They just sort of run with it. But you know, you've listened to enough. Probably not just this podcast, but like other podcasts and know the deal. I have. I have listened to other podcasts and also quite up with your Peppa Pig podcast. Oh, you got the plug like up front. <laughs> <laughs> up front. Yeah, that was probably more your as far as, far as your knowledge base goes. It probably makes more sense to have you on that one. But it would have. But that's okay. I got to consult with Matt when I have a co-host on that one. You can't make decisions. You no, know, this one I can make all the decisions that I have to run. You know, it's a democracy over there. It's a. It's I not. To, <laughs> it's I a totally. Yeah, I can't just like here. Yoko Ono. You know, and bring you all of a sudden. You're just sitting on the recordings of Peppa Pig all of a sudden, and Matt's just you know wondering what's happened. I'm like, oh yeah, Cat's going to sit in on all the sessions now. You're literally like Yoko, just sitting in the corner, wondering what's you know, offering suggestions and all that kind of stuff. Um, so. The reason that you're on today is basically because we we're, were supposed to have a baby today. We were. But we didn't. We, no, the baby's still here. Baby has not yet arrived. So do you want to give the quick, the, 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 the baby for dummies reason of why we, we were supposed to have a baby but we didn't have a baby? Sure. So our baby was upside down, so it's called breech, which means that its butt and head were around the wrong way. So that um, it's a nonconformist. <laughs> that's right. It was doing its own thing, as yeah. our three and bit year old would say. And that we had a planned C section booked in for today. So we would have been at the hospital seven a.m. having the baby out. I noticed that today, for the first time in weeks, I woke up at like six o'clock. I know. I was thinking the same thing. Like we're up really early, just this like we were like going. We consciously would have been up already, even though we've known for about a week that we didn't have to be up on mm. this day. But for some reason, we both woke up early. Like we would have had to get up and go to the hospital. Yeah, I know. It was a bit weird that the baby managed to be very determined and somehow found a way to turn itself around, despite at this late stage in the game that. I'm 39 weeks pregnant now. So at this late stage in the game, it's highly unlikely there's room to turn, but this baby found a way. So we've probably got a stubborn little one on our hands, very yeah, determined one on our hands. The obstetrician said something like 100 to 1. Oh, I still was, remember those kind of odds unlikely. being thrown around. Like never tell me the odds, but it was like, yeah, but just Caesar, you'll be in. Yep. It'll be happening. You'll be out. It'll take half an hour. So now we're back to the original plan. So Which is the waiting game. <laughs> So yeah, I wasn't kind of I've kind of been leading up with the last couple of weeks, just going, oh well, pretty much you know when the baby comes, the episodes will stop, and I'll just have to work out when I can and can't do stuff. It just depends mm. what the baby can and can't do. Whether it's it might be be able to do more because I'll just be on leave and I'll be able to just do. I've got uh, one lined up uh, soon. I won't give out away who it is, but he's basically works nights and he's more available during the day. And I was like, well, uh -huh. I actually might have, it might be easier because I might be on, but it just depends on naps. And well, I think that it's, it's stretching my memory back to when our little one was the newborn, but newborns sleep a lot was my recollection. So yeah, I, think... I just feel like there was more entertaining of people, but second time people aren't going to care as much. No, you get people like aren't core rallies, around. but you're not going to get as many pop ones, pop no, overs. The, the more people will come isn't... over for the pool probably than seeing the baby if it's going to be hot. 
No, and it was winter. We had endless cups of tea. I think our dishwasher was almost exclusively filled up with tea cups and little sauces that I, I just don't see as many people being as excited second time round to come no, in for a cuppa. And now we're in like a bigger house, which would be better for entertaining anyway, but oh well. Here we are. Too bad. So that's where we've landed. Where I thought, I thought well, this is probably as good a time as any to get you on just because, you know. We can do the, the the lead in, and then we can do the follow up. But yeah, that's two episodes in the bank. You know, we could we could literally look. We could record tomorrow. You know, I, I part one, part two. Yeah, well, I had who was I talking to about it, saying, "Oh, we should do a record before," and they'll be like, "Oh, that's a bad idea." And I'm like, oh, "Really? No." I think it was. I think they might have thought that I was doing it like in the hospital. Or something oh, like that. yeah, no, that would and be like shoving intense. the recorder in your face while you're kind of like having contractions. So instead of my Spotify playlist of my eight to ten hours worth of you know amazing songs, Fire. yeah, pretty much Arcade Fire, Florence and the Machine. The XX, etc. That we get podcasting. Yeah, but you don't even you're not even listening to anything. You're just recording podcasts <laughs> and then maybe playing them back over the thing. Like I could have just played my podcast and wouldn't have to be there. You were just like once <laughs> just those, spirit, yeah, once the, that as gas kicks in and the morphine kicks in, you, you know you can't really tell what's up and what's down. So no, that the once you have the gas, it's like you're very end of night messy drunk. Mm. I need a spew. Blah. Yeah, not. Like one more dance at <laughs> Yah Yah's or whatever. Yah Yah's ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. Look that up, people who are listening. So, anyway, uh, this is a Star Wars podcast. And actually, there was some Star Wars news that was in your world the other day that I messaged about. You look at me a confused oh. face, but as soon as I say what it is, you'll go, like, ah, which was that Natalie Portman was in town yes. the other day. And, you know, Natalie Portman, Queen Armadala herself, was in Melbourne. And where where does she show up? At the Melbourne Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Which is your team. Yes. And for some reason, she decided that she was going to rock up and watch the Demons train because it's post pre-season. So there's no games on the moment, but they're all doing their summer training and stuff. And she turned up in a Melbourne women's, because they have the women's league as well. She turned up in a AFLW Melbourne jumper. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, the same one that Olive has. Oh, it was yeah, it was very cool. Um, and I, I think I didn't see any footage of her like, kicking a footy around or anything, but no, but I think that's kind of hard as well. You know, it's it's much less an exciting a photo op if you're trying to like, spray a hand pass or yeah. I know they got um, I think Megan Markle did a hand pass oh. when she was here, but you know. It's Meghan Markle. Yeah, yeah well, I don't know. <laughs> who knows? Who knows the difference? So anyway, yeah, Natalie Portman was here for a bit, and she was wearing she was in the in the Melbourne gear, so that was quite cool. Represent. I don't, yeah, so he must have been pretty happy. I think she was wearing Daisy Pierce's number. I think who, who's captain of Melbourne, and she uh, put put some post on saying that it was I guess it was okay that Natalie Portman could step in and <laughs> we could, she could play Daisy Pierce in the in the, in the I know the that they look quite similar. I had to do a double take actually. Although Daisy Pierce being pregnant with twins, I'd imagine, looks slightly different at well, this point in time. Well, uh, uh, Natalie Portman's been pregnant with twins. Oh, Well, Queen Amidala has. Oh, really? Queen Amidala has. <laughs> Luke and Leia, they were twins. They could have exchanged things. She could have been true. like, it's true. Daisy, I can give you all this advice about when I gave <laughs> twins to Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. <laughs> That'd be really great if Natalie Portman just thought all that stuff really happened. She's like, yeah, I gave birth to twins. I think she has actually legitimately got children. I, I think she probably does. Yeah. She's, She's like, right don't age. worry, there'll be like a funny robot that'll come. And have you you've, have you seen Revenge of the Sith? No. You haven't seen episode three with pregnant no. Natalie Portman? Really? No. Oh, all right. Well, we'll have to. I think Catherine's <laughs> actually got my, my Star Wars DVD Blu-rays at the moment. But yeah, so she's pregnant pretty much all the way through that movie. Mm-hmm. And at the end, she's like carrying twins where she's sort of. So she'd be humongous. Yeah, she looks pretty humongous. We probably should have checked, you know, for accuracy. Maybe we'll run a few pictures or something. <laughs> but, you know, like, oh, she doesn't. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of turmoil, you know, like her husband turns to the dark side and goes bad and stuff. And she doesn't. Yeah, that's not ideal when you're pregnant, really. That doesn't really look like. But that looks like the, her biggest problem. It doesn't look like she's sort of struggling with the ailments and things. No, so she pregnant. doesn't have like terrible acid reflux. And her <laughs> hips are, you know, waddling around. Well, if they do, it's it's, it's not really remarked upon, but. <laughs> It is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So it could be that, you know, they've science has come a long way and they don't have to worry about that kind of thing. And there's like so basically there's she's sort of pregnant at the end. I'll give you the, and so she's she goes and she finds out that Anakin's turned to the dark side. Mm. So she goes to seek him out, try and bring him back and he doesn't like that and Obi Wan he thinks that Obi he's she's brought Obi Wan to kill him and he turns on her and he gives her a choke like oh. you turned on me for a bit, which is a bit, you know, a bit full on. 
And then uh, Obi Wan beats Anakin. They take Padme away, and she's a bit sort of, you know, Aww. what happened? And by then, Anakin sort of being burnt alive and Ugh. yeah you obviously haven't seen this one no i have not <laughs> we explain the end of revenge of the sith too <laughs> and then they take her you know because they've got to get the babies away from darth because he's darth vader now mm. and yeah she goes this sort of moon thing and they she's sort of they pushing and then there's this sort of weird floaty robot that's going oh biba biba boo boo and she pulls out like luke mm. and leia but it's never really because it, it's never really explained whether she knows she's having twins uh-huh so, so it's in the future, but so, so she's not getting acid reflux, but she probably has less ultrasounding technology. Well, I don't know. Well, she's humongous though, because they talk about the baby, like they, she says that she's having a baby, and then they sort of talk about the, the baby in the in the single tense, ah. and they never mention. She, she even says like, "I want my baby to," because before you know they find out that they're pregnant, and and she's like, "Oh, I want my baby to to live on Naboo where I'm from, and we can." A little house by the river, and it'll be all really nice. But she never talks about two babies, and it's a yeah, bit weird. The, the, that the psychology of that is, yeah, that that's not quite right. That that seems like a lady that doesn't know she's got two babies. Which is weird because, you know, she's a politician. She's pretty high up the food chain and she's, you know, and she's got a Jedi as a husband who can <laughs> potentially see everything and, you know, do Knows everything. Of, and nobody's been able to tell that she's got two babies. Mm. So they're kind of at the end they go, oh, the, 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 the Dr. Robert goes, oh, we've got to move quickly if you want to save the babies. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda are like, babies and she's like she's carrying twins and they're all like oh my god she's carrying twins and these are like the jedis who are supposed to you know be the smartest oh. most capable people in the galaxy and they can't Feels tell like a plot hole well you know prequels <laughs> Here <Okay>. we are. <laughs> <laughs> but she's humongous she is she looks like she's big enough to carry two babies yeah, yeah. but but i suppose she's quite small now like Portman, but still excuse me so there you go there is a bit of there is a, pre- a pregnancy precedence go. set Set there, but yeah, I don't know if she, her, so she's saying her feet are swollen or. No, well, although I have to say I don't have the the swelling feet. That's that's not a symptom that I'm currently suffering from. Yeah, got plenty is, of other symptoms. Yeah, plenty of from. other things. What was it say that you feet a lot? Oh, she got shack feet like shack. <laughs> shack feet. Shack feet. That this is like I get exclusively in summer. So this is regardless of being pregnant or not pregnant. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So because it hasn't it hasn't quite hit summer yet, but there's been no shack feet, so it's not pregnancy related. Uh, now your Star Wars, you you obviously live with someone who's into Star Wars yes. now, but. It's not the first time you've lived with someone no. who's into Star Wars before. <laughs> Definitely not. So do you want to elaborate on, on that one? Of course. So my brother's been on here as one of your guests. So He still has one of the highest Yeah, I was going to say episodes. James O'Brien or whatever it was that I was trying to remember his, um, his name from the chat boards or something. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> the only expanded universe chat yeah. boards. He had some kind of like... Yeah, I can't remember. It wasn't Whatever as clever. It, was, as I, it, it wasn't. It wasn't particularly clever. I thought. No, it, I thought it would be cle- more clever. But anyway. But uh. so my brother was very, very much into Star Wars, which um, you know that in his room that he would off he would have a bookshelf full of Star Wars books, which he still has, which he still has. Yeah. So like that I've, the books I've said this survived. before that if you go around to your mum and dad's place, it's like James was lost at sea. <laughs> Yes. That it's basically like, well, he might come back one day. We have to leave his room exactly how it, with the, how it with is. With the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles technodrome. Yeah, he's got there's a, a, a collection of vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys that would any mid thirties man would kill for, and uh, yeah, walls and walls of Star Wars expanded universe books. Mm. And 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 it like a host of variety, like, you know, that um, our three and a half year old thinks his room is very interesting because there's often Happy Meal toys, like the old vintage Happy Meal ones. I think they're probably worth something now too. Yeah, they probably are. Yeah, he's got to be. He's careful. sitting on a bit of a. <laughs> yeah, he's got, I mean, he's grown up. He's he's married and he's in a big boy house with his wife now. You think he should probably? Well, I'm just looking at. It. I've mentioned this a few times that my parents have been systematically dropping stuff off here now that we own a house and that they brought over my CDs and they came around again the other day and brought another box of CDs. So, I think there's. Four boxes of CDs in this study now that I've got. To, well, lucky you're going me, on parental leave. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to have to get some more shelves, or I don't know, we're going to have to, I don't know, insulate the roof or something with them. They're just not <laughs> worth anything. That's the problem. I've got like ten ones that are probably rare and worth something. I've got a really rare something for Kate one actually, a really really rare one. So that might be worth. I might have to tap Steel because he's he's mates with something for Kate. And see if it's mm. worth something. I don't know. Yeah, so when we went, um, or when you took me, you'd been to the midnight streaming of the, I guess, I'm, try- I'm trying to get my um, 
excuse my pregnancy brain, trying to get my numbering in order. So there was episodes four, five, six, so episode seven. That yeah, was the Force one Awakens. Too. Force Awakens. So we went to see Force Awakens. Like, oh, yeah, you know, jo- Josh, you'd already been to midnight screening. That, um, you know, so many people in my life, especially James, my brother, and you, so into Star Wars. I'm like, oh, you know, I'll go along. You know, why not? Yeah, I remember. And what... Um, What's surprising was actually my level of fandom and how interested and how invested I was. And I went, actually, just because I'm not an obscene Star Wars fan doesn't mean I'm not a Star Wars fan. And just compared to the average person, actually quite a fan. It's just more that compared to you or James, <laughs> not yeah. quite so much. So. I remember you cried in Force Awakens. Oh, I totally did. So I seem to remember the moment that you cried in Force Awakens was when uh, it all sort of gone down. They're back at the base and Ray meets Princess Leia and she says, may the force be with you and she's going to go find Luke and she kind of gets in the, the ship by herself oh, yeah. and it's just like it's time for me to step up and I'm doing this and she looks over at Chewie and Chewie looks over at her and she takes a breath and gets ready and you're sort of there sort of uh. whopping <laughs> your eyes and although you are a little bit of a... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a notorious choir in movies anyway. However, I was very emotionally invested and I really loved the... Um... Star Wars. What did you cry in the other? There was something that was hilarious that you cried in the other day. I think it was a pregnancy. I don't know. Well, we've been we've been watching Parks and Rec again, and that sets you off. Pretty it does. Much. Anytime Ben and Leslie do anything, you kind of get a bit oh. a bit teary about, about Ben and Leslie doing stuff. But then we just finished like the whole series where it's all quite sentimental. That sort of it was quite sentimental. Yeah. No, yeah, you know it's good. I could happily go back through again to start on season two, <laughs> skip season one. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that when episode eight came out, I was really pumped, you know, this time around. So that, and, you know, I was certainly really pumped to see Solo as well, that I think just compared to a person off the street, I realised that, you know, I've, I've absolutely been invested in Star Wars, been really across it for a long time. But if you... Except I haven't seen the prequels. Or At all? Only, oh, a little bit, not much. So would you have gone, like, if you didn't live with me, would you have gone though? Like, would you enough to have been like, I'll go see Star Wars? Maybe. Depends Depends what was happening, I guess. If I had people to go with, <laughs> I don't know. So, okay, someone was just like, you were just with a group of people and they went, oh, we're going to go see Star Wars. You want to go see Star Wars? Maybe. I think that in my older age, that now I'm a mid-30s person, that it's less likely your friends all get together and go to the movies. It's just sort of, you know, something that used to happen. Back in the day, that's less likely. Well, now. if they were showing it like the Kino, and you'd like to, you know, you'd like to think you're arty farty, and you can go <laughs> the, you're like, oh, well, if it's at the Kino, I'll go. But or the Rivoli or the Nova, or, or yeah, or the what's the one in South Yarra? The is that the Nova? The Como. Oh, the Como. Mm. Yeah, then you'd be like, oh, I'll go, I guess. Well, you can drink wine when yeah. you're at the Como. <laughs> so I have been going to all the, all the midnight ones. Um, you've been. Happy to stay home. I have been <laughs> for the midnight one. I think Force Awakens. I actually went to work the next day. I think Force Awakens and Rogue One. I went to work the next morning. Came home late. Went to mm. the morning. But then Last Jedi, I just went. Oh no, I'll just take the day off. I think that was wise. Which was the way to do it. And you always you were kind of like, well, I'll just book it the, a couple of days after, and we'll just go. Yep. We'll go gold class, or you know, you seem to be pretty happy to wait a day or day or two. You don't I'm very have to... happy to wait a day or two. That you know, as much as I'm pumped to see it, you know, it doesn't have to be right this second. I mean, you don't have to. You're not really worried about spoilers or anything like no, that. No, and I think I'm less um, ingrained in the Twitterverse that you know, it's less likely to come up on my feed that the spoilers yeah. <laughs> don't follow quite the same things you follow. No, that's right. Well, that's well, the lead up usually the, the once it sort of gets into the public, you know. Th- thing and people start seeing it, I usually tend to get off Twitter or completely or mm. I'll mute a bunch of words. I'll go like Luke muted, Ray muted. I so don't... it's like when I didn't go to Splendor in the Grass, mute Splendor in the Grass. <laughs> I don't want oh, to hear about it. Oh, you want people to have being a good time. <laughs> well, I guess it's kind of like that. But you would have gone, that would only work if you were not going to Splendor in the Grass like on the first day and then two days later you were going you didn't want to know who was playing or something. Yeah, the, um, the similarity stopped there really. Yeah. But I do know how to meet a hashtag. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. Yeah, it kind of works. I don't know if it really works that well, but yeah, it's all right. You know, you can you, you tend to sort of get through it okay. Um, so you haven't seen the prequels? Well, I remember that because when did they – and I've listened to a few of your podcasts. They came out mid-90s? 99. Late 90s. 2002, 2005. So 99, I was 16. So it's that kind of, 
you're not really that interested, much more interested in like Mean Girls and all the other kind of, you know, high Whatever school. Whatever movie, what's his name the was craft, in. The um, Craft. Jason Tom- Taylor Thomas is in. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Jonathan Taylor. Well, did you know that they're remaking Lion King? Oh, uh, I did see that and it's Beyonce and Danny, D- Donald Glover? Yeah. but okay. oh, not, not Donald Glover. Yeah, no, it's Donald Glover. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, they're not bringing back JTT. JTT. Missed opportunity, although I'm, I'm pretty happy with Beyonce and Donald Glover, so, you know. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like the My other brother. one's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver will probably like The Lion King. Yeah, so I think that when Phantom Menace came out, I was sort of a bit past the age group. I wasn't considered a kid, so it wasn't like, you know, they had all the Jar Jar Binks paraphernalia. I remember that ads, the Pizza Hut ads with Jar Jar Binks. And mm-hmm. So that wasn't really sort of floating my boat. I remember it um, must have been a weekend and we'd rented it from the, I think, the DVD to watch maybe as a family. And I'm like, oh, watching a family, watching a DVD Doing with your family. Doing something with your family, lame. <laughs> Bunch of lamos. Oh, I watched quite a few food movies that I was more like, eh, I don't know if this is really my thing. So I remember coming in and out. I think I sort of watched half of it, left, mm. and the other two sort of I was a bit, eh, whatever. So they didn't get great reviews. No, nah, they're... They've got their moments, but they're not. They're nowhere near as good as the new ones, I don't think. But you know, that's my no, opinion. But surely James origin- would have been pumped. Yeah, I would assume so. Maybe that you know, he's a year and a half younger than me, so he would have been. I was been year oh, yeah. ten. He's year eight. You know, still miles apart at that age. Yeah, I suppose so. You know, who I suppose would- yeah, he probably needs someone to take him too. So oh, I was gonna say year eight boys. That I remember them going to go into the city and play LAN. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. God. In the school holidays. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm off to Chadston. <laughs> <laughs> That's just just as uncool, really. Oh. oh, wow, I didn't know that. Well, I have to, I'll have to speak to James about that one. Uh, well, this yeah. is before you had um, what's it, Fortnite and, you know, you could all play together with your headsets. This is like the original. Yeah, that's true. I can't laugh. I have been playing Fortnite with Cam, although I have, I have dropped off. I have noticed that. Yeah, well, it's because of Red Dead. I've been playing Red Dead Redemption. I've just been riding my horse from once for an, an hour. Like every time you walk past, I'm either riding a horse or shooting someone in the head. But yeah, I'm nearly, I think I'm nearly at the end. That's all right. We'll never float your boat. Yeah, well, I mean, because you've been, uh, you have had a, a rough pregnancy. Yes. Um, so you have been going to bed quite early yes. most nights. So I'm not that, much fun. Let's be honest. Yeah, well, it is. You know, it's kind of like that. It's the sort of the wind. You've got to take the window when you can take the window to to get some. Some good rare, some quality rare. Yeah, timing. well, it's, it's good because it's not the kind of game you can just. It's not like FIFA. You can kind of pick it up and play it for ten minutes and put it down. You yeah, got to yeah. kind of got to invest, invest, and sit on your horse and <laughs> grow your mustache and and do all that kind of stuff, which is really what happens. But uh, yes, so um, so that um, so back when we were talking about that, yeah, so prequels didn't really see them, but the original ones absolutely. So I'd seen the episodes four, five, six. So there would have been all on video at home kind of thing? Yeah, I think so. Or taped off the TV. I think you've spoken about that in previous podcasts that certainly it's something I always remember being around. So whether, you know, we, they were often on TV maybe or we'd certainly watch them. Were you with the biggest sister? So did you get more control over what went under the TV? Do you one TV? I know you had... We, a, we did live in a democracy, though, as much as... Yeah, I know, but you sort of, you got to be, like, you had more than one TV family growing up. I don't even know. I know there was more. I know I went around to your dad's place quite recently, mum and dad's place, and got rid of a couple of the world's biggest CRTs, <laughs> like the heaviest, as wide as they are, tall things. And there was one in the front room, and then there was another one, you know, that was lying around. By the around, end of but, primary school, we definitely were a two TV family, I believe, not so three. So it kind of made it easy. Two. Three? Oh, <laughs> well, God. <laughs> <laughs> different different worlds, man. <laughs> so they used to be because we had we had a living room which where the, the big TV was, mm. and then I'm fairly sure my parents had a TV in their room upstairs, mm-hmm. and then I'm sure there was one in our front room. Yeah. yeah, which is probably that big one that I got rid of. Yes, there was. Yeah, they'd been there forever. Oh uh, yeah, there, there was that one, but there was a previous like forever TV. Oh, right. Yeah. Because actually that one was flat screen, so it yeah, must have no, been reasonably there was, there was newer. So there must have been ones. a big F yeah, off. Yeah. Right. Well, because if you had, like, well, I'll just say, because if you have but more than one if... TV, it's easier to stick a video of a movie on that something like Star Wars, where it's like James would be like, I just want to watch Star Wars, but 
I'm not going to be able to take over the whole family TV to watch Star Wars. No, but I don't know how many VCRs we had, I guess. It's the, we definitely <laughs> had, you know, VCRs. We had one. <laughs> we, had one we had one VCR and it had a, the remote was on a cord. <laughs> we had the corded thing too. Yeah, yeah you know, technology is pretty similar. Um, I think you're forgetting also how terrible TV was. So it's like you only had certain times where there were certain shows. So most of the time, you know. It's like, hey, I've got to make sure I got home for Full House. And yeah, then... exactly. You had to brush your teeth after Full House. <laughs> it was like, hey, Dad, first, and then Full oh, House. Oh, we and... can't talk about hey, Dad anymore. <laughs> no, you can't. Look that up. Google that one for our international listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, because I was the oldest, so I was. It was probably easier for me to be like put Star Wars on or something like that. And Mum and Dad weren't huge TV watchers anyway, so. There wasn't probably heaps of stuff that we sat down and watched as a family. We'd sort of do that. I think when Elise was here, we were talking about like going to the video store and spending like forever in the video store trying to find something that we yes. could agree on. Although we'd, 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 the, we would get the deal. You'd get five weeklies for five bucks or something. Uh, I don't think we had that. The country, you didn't have a lot of choice. <laughs> so I think it was still pretty, yeah. No, but certainly are they, that all of us like Star Wars. So yeah, I don't. I don't remember not liking I've never really the asked original. AJ, your youngest brother, about mm. Star Wars. I wouldn't even know what his fandom levels are. Oh. I guess because it's always been James has always been so into it. So he's well, always the, the go-to. It's hard to know relatively where you stand in light of the general population. Yeah, well, I guess so. Like I wouldn't even know if he. I don't even know if he's been to the goes to the movies. AJ, I know he's, he's a Netflix busy. guy. He's a bit, I know he's you know manages a, bu- a pub in the in the city. He's works he's a lot of nights. He's off at events. Yeah, he's watches. off at events, managing pubs, or he's on off on holiday. So <laughs> he hasn't got time for other stuff. So I wouldn't even know. Probably should know that really after all these years. <laughs> but anyway, I'll ask him. Maybe he's listening. I don't think so. But no, I don't so think you so. never know. I don't think he's got time for podcasts either. Uh, okay. So, and then we also, so I know, and we just, um, that cause our, we're the youngest of our family. So we've got older cousins, which were all, so we would often go around to family events and being the youngest cousins, we're the kids that sat on the children's table. We were the ones that, you know, had to be entertained. What well, they went off and did teenage adult things. So my aunt, um, used to run an after school program and she had all these VHSs of the Ewoks. So ah. we would always watch the Ewoks, and we went over to my aunt's house. So is that the Ewok cartoon or the Ewok movies? This is where I'm, this is where I'm a bit hazy. So there's the two Ewok movies. Well, they were in America. They were made for TV, mm-hmm. and in Australia, in, the, in Australia, and I think other countries, they were like, we can just put this in the cinema, and people will pay for it because nah. it's Star Wars. So there was Caravan of Courage, and there was Battle for Endor. Caravan of Courage is the much more famous one, I think. And that's got the, the little girl in it. And I think the little girl's in both of them, actually. But originally it was like the family are on Endor and the mum and dad get like kidnapped. And then it's like the older brother and the little girl team up with the Ewoks to save the family. So is it kind of like a Muppets well, real life and the other no, one it's was real, a cartoon? Yeah, it's real life, yeah. So it's all like pe- Ewoks Yeah, I think that these were the thing. cartoons we must have Right. Because in the second one, Battle for Endor, they like kill off the family in like the first five oh. minutes. Dark. Yeah, so it's kind of like Alien 3 where like Ripley spends all of Aliens trying to save the little girl and they okay. kill her off at the start of Alien 3 and it completely negates the first, the second one. All right, so these are the Ewoks. This is the e e e e Ewoks. <laughs> yeah, the, the, song, the one that which is, our daughter loves. <laughs> yeah, which Olive loves. So, yeah, Olive, we should get on to Olive. Olive's kind of had – our daughter has had Star Wars kind of pushed on her a little bit, I guess. She also but, loves it. Yeah, she loves she knows, she knows that I like it and she, she, yeah, she likes – I think originally she just got a chance to watch stuff on on the phone on the phone because she doesn't get a lot of screen time. So she, she, he's a reasonably clever, clever cookie that you know two and two together. Oh, d- d- if I ask Dad to watch Star Wars on the phone, he'll let me. Great, this is an easy. Yeah, so we've sort of watched. Uh, this depends on the thing. Some of the things she doesn't like. The Forces of Destiny cartoons. I tried to show her those, and she's probably a little bit too young for those, which are the little the cartoon things that they've sort of aimed at kids. And they've just released a brand new thing called Galaxy of Adventures, which is like. The original movie is broken into these little one, two minute anima- animations, but it's quite anime looking. So I might cool. run that by her and see what she reckons. But um, yeah, she kind of, you know, she knows a few things. She knows Ray and she, well, she loves the Forces of Destiny dolls though. She really does. So we've got a few of those. So she's got a Princess Leia, she's got two Princess Leias and she's got a Ray 
and BB-8 as well. And what was she doing the other day with with her Ra- no her Princess Leia? Oh, she, she wanted to she wanted um, Princess Leia to be on the motorbike. Yes. So <laughs> she she put her on her. She went and got her little bike, which she's completely outgrown this sort of plasticky pink thing. And so she she was um that I had to try and assemble Leia, like stick her legs through the, the holes in the bike so she could push Leia around so she could ride her motorbike. She had a motorbike helmet, so mm. she needed to ride. So I don't think she's seen that scene from Return of the Jedi, No, it was though. super cute, though. So did she just associate the fact that she was wearing a helmet that she must have been wanting to ride a bike? I think so. She's like, Leia needs her motorbike. Where's her motorbike, Mum? Like, well, you've got a bike, so yeah, okay. imagination imagination in tears. So she's just, you know, this makes sense. She just got it from the yeah, got it <laughs> from the outfit that worked. Well, it's better than because she had stripped Leia down. <laughs> Leia was like Rudy Nudy. N- Rudy Nudy for a while there, and there was one bit where she had her her like camouflage poncho one, but like nothing else underneath. So it was sort of just getting past her. her... <laughs> Looked like Leia was at a festival after too many. Um, yeah. Like she, her dress was hiked up and it, like, you know, you, it was just covering her modesty yeah. basically. <laughs> Not really, but yes. But um, yeah. So the, no, the forces of destiny dolls have been great and she's really liked those. And they've, um, we've got, we've got a few of those, There's actually quite a few other ones, but you know, three is enough really. Yeah. We got a pretty good deal on those. Yeah, she really digs those. And she yeah, she definitely likes Ray. She's got a lot of Ray stuff. And baby Ray. Yeah, so she's got a she's got a Forces of Destiny Ray and then she's got a three and three quarter inch one that I got sort of from one of the reject shop sales. And she's like, Oh, that's Mummy Ray and that's Baby Ray. <laughs> and then she's got the bobblehead Ray as well. <laughs> she does. So she quite she knows Ray. And there was a, a video um that Jason Ward had put up of his daughter because they live near Disneyland and they took, they've got a daughter, I think quite similar age, age to Olive actually, their daughter Penny, I think her name is, and she's about three and a bit. Okay. And they're like the family that lives and breathes Star Wars. So in, their kids are way, way into it. And they have like a bit we can go to, they're building a proper whole Star Wars land there, but they do have some sort of Star Wars stuff there already. And they had like a bit where you can go in and you can meet Ray and that's, you know, like a lady dressed as Ray. Uh, yeah. And she was actually quite good. She looked quite a bit like Daisy Ridley and she was even putting on the accent and stuff as well. So he'd filmed that and put it on Instagram. Ah. And I was like, oh, look, look, I love, look, this little girl's meeting Ray. Aww. And she's like, oh, look, yeah. And then like two months later, she goes, I want to see the girl, little girl meet Ray. I'm like, what? It's made an impression. Yeah, it was just completely out of the blue when we were driving around the car somewhere. So I have to say that Olive's also very into the John Williams soundtracks. So I think you did cover this on another one of your podcasts, an early one, because it was a while ago when we were driving to your parents in Langatha. So that's about an hour and a half from where we live in Melbourne. And um obsessed with, with the with the original soundtracks, the, the John Williams the, in ones. The Ewok songs. Yeah, just all of them. And often now that we'll be in the car driving just the two of us, like, oh, mummy, can you put on Star Wars? Oh, no, that only lives on Daddy's phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, it's also like you can't just pull out your phone while you're driving and you know no, queue up no. Spotify or something like that as well. No. So it really works when there's two people. In the car. Yeah, that's right. Well, we did it. We had it on the other day. We sort of we got a new iPad the other day because yours had carked it. Yes. But now it's the only thing it's good for now is to be the media center. It can still run Spotify. So we rigged it up so it's the little media thing, and we put Star Wars on, and then. We left the room and then looked through the thing and Olive was there dancing to Aww. Star Wars going da 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 So she was uh she was into it. So she had a she had a Force Awakens poster on her wall for quite a while. She did. It's only when we moved house it sort of got taken down. Yeah, it kinda of got mangled in the move, I think. Yeah, a little that, bit. And her her Melbourne football club poster as well. That's all right. We can get some other stuff get for that. Some other things for her room. But um yeah, so eventually she'll probably be old enough to well, she talks about it. She's like, maybe when I'm five, I might be big enough when I'm five. Yeah. Well, we'll just we'll just see. We'll, see. we'll, just, we'll just have <laughs> to. We'll, well, we'll just have don't to. Don't make promises we can't keep. Well, like Marty, who's been on before, his his kids are a little bit older, and they've they've watched them and stuff. And Atticus is really into Star Wars. I think Kizzy's sort of been different. I think she doesn't mind it, but she's gotten really into Harry Potter. So mm. you know, we'll just have to just see what she's into. She's either going to be into it or or she isn't. Or we can't really force her. No. At this point, at this point, all signs point to yes. She is very interested. Oh, she's definitely interested. She definitely wants to know more, and she's got this sort of weird fascination with Darth Vader as well. Which oh, is yeah, weird, she loves it. Which is a bit weird. <laughs> where she specifically asked for a Darth Vader for her birthday. 
And the Darth Vader is so important to her that because we're doing a thing where, oh, you know, if friends come over for, to play, that if you've got a spe- few special things that you don't want other kids to play with, we'll put them away to avoid fights and, te- and tears and that kind of thing. Oh, we better put my Darth Vader away. You don't want my cousin Lawrence to play with Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> so special, my, like, couple of special like, things. Is it really? It's it was like... like a... When do you play with it? Yeah, I don't think she, she just likes to have it on display, basically. So she's basically like me where it's <laughs> yeah, like... No. I'm just looking like, over... Like dad, like daughter. Yeah, that's right. I'm just looking at the wall now and there's just a whole stack of uh, figures and stuff on the wall. We're kind of out of space, really. We might have to do... Uh, no, a bit of rearranging or just you buy, can get rid of some of my stuff. Buy less crap. Well, you've got like one tiny little corner well, with some stuff I on it. And that's about take, it. You can take out my corner. And we can start, start put a bookshelf. Uh, we'll else see. Me. We'll see. Reject shop actually have started. Got another wave of figures at the moment. So I got a couple the other day. But uh. yeah, there was a bit of frantic t- messaging between the Melbourne Star Wars crew ah, going. Oh, does anybody need this? Who who's got one of these? And yeah, a couple of Matthew. I love the camaraderie. Well, Matthew Th- uh, Thurban, who was on last week, he is in Adelaide. No, sorry, Sydney. And he said that he hit a bunch of stores looking for stuff as well. Mm. But he goes, oh, there was one bloke who's got there before me. And he think he might be a- clean them out. Yeah, he's either got a or shop reselling. or he's doing a. Re- he's trying to flip them. And he, he said he, he said he went to one reject shop. And he said, oh, one person came in and bought twenty four of them and then just walked out the door. Oh. So, so you need a price limit or a item limit. Well, it's not you know like. You know, Chinese baby, not, not baby formula. Not baby formula. Yeah, like, exactly. Person. Yeah, I don't think they're trying to ship them off to China and flip them or off. Or a half-price like Huggies we bought today. Yeah, that's right. You just got to watch the deals, I suppose, to, get, <laughs> to find sweet all that. Deals. Yeah, to find all those sweet deals. Um, so we don't know what we're having baby-wise. No. So it's it's a mystery. Um, Names-wise... I might, since we're recording this tonight, it is on schedule. I probably will just put it straight up. I was going to wait till the baby was born, but I might just put it up anyway. So I won't. Oh, you won't reveal? I won't reveal the names that we have mm. because, because. Know, it could be another week and <laughs> somebody be. might be like, well, did you use that name? Or, geez, don't use that name that you no, mentioned. No, you can start a poll. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can start a poll. And um, Steel Saunders, uh, who uh, had a little boy, Harrison, he had his wife on there talking about names and things a little bit. And, um, I'd actually guessed his name. I actually predicted that was what they call this, but I didn't chime in. I think somebody had actually said it as well, and they named it Harrison after Harrison Ford. Yeah, but Harrison's also just a nice name. Yeah, it's a nice name. I've got a name. few friends, which I'm sure are not Star Wars fans or not that I'm aware of, and they've got baby Harrisons. So. Yeah, it's a nice name, and Harry's good too, but... Uh, yeah, that was never on our radar. We never really had any Star Wars names in there, did we? Ooh. We sort of Carrie was one that we kind of floated yeah, around a little Carrie bit. Yeah, Carrie Chapman just yeah, it doesn't really no. work. Doesn't, it sounds a bit yeah, it doesn't really no, doesn't really fly. It sounds like she's in like some children's story. Oh, Carrie Chapman and yeah, it's a little bit yeah. So you know, a bit sing songy. Yeah, and then boys' names. Well, Star Wars isn't really great. For, I mean, there's Luke, obviously. I know a fair few people who've got boys who are called Luke. A lot of the yeah. Star Wars people have named their boys Luke, and but we never really, uh, ever really flew. And then Han is a bit, you know. That's a bit out there. No, nah, it's a bit out there. And then you get into stuff like Poe and Kylo and, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Hux, <laughs> Obi-Wan. Yeah, <laughs> no, they don't really fly. And then girls, well, there's only about four girls in Star Wars anyway, so there's oh. only Leia and I think there is... There's one guy. I can't remember who it is. He I think he named his daughter Leia, I think. Oh, yeah. And there's no real kind of double, you know what I mean? Like you can mm. kind of go Harrison and you can go, oh, well, Harrison's a name that, like you said. That a lot of pe- people have. People will be able to have reasonably- it. I'd say it's in the top of Australian 100, I reckon. Mm, right. Um, but if you're naming your kid Leia. Yeah, it's you know, there's there. no, there's no hiding. It's basically no, that no, Star it's on Wars. Front That's just a Star Wars, Star Wars name, basically. It might as well be Anakin or something like that. Like it's, it's the only way to find it. Yeah, I think though, in, uh, the, cause there's a name, and we're not calling our baby this because it's been vetoed. So I quite na- like the name Allegra, for instance. <laughs> and I was <laughs> just looking at me like I'm an idiot. And that I was reading about it, and actually, the poet Lord Byron invented the name Allegra. Like just for his daughter, I just decided. Like, it just sounds like Ke- like Fly of the Concords, like <laughs> Keitha. No, like no. Keith is like the girl version of Keitha. Keith, Keitha. No. Anyway, so that this, so I, I think that in time, you know, centuries later, people might be saying, "Oh, you know, layer this or layer that." It might be more common, but at this point in time, well, it must have been a name. It must have been a name because, like, the original Star Wars names, like the original Star Wars, like Han, Luke, like there's Owen. I mean, Obi Wan's a bit more out there. 
But I think originally Obi-Wan was going to be, I think George Lucas wrote it thinking it was going to be an Asian character. Oh, okay. So it's probably got more of an Asian East slant yeah, yeah. before it was Alec Guinness. Um, well, Darth Vader, obviously, but yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could look it up. I'm sure it's in the. Have you got the baby? Here we go. <laughs> Let's do. So this is another tip from Steel. So like, if you start talking about something, you look it up on the thing straight oh, away. Oh, here you go. Yeah, you don't yeah. just so talk about it. Not for. I brought this up a few. I brought this up on the podcast a few times because it has happened where I've, we've fallen down a rabbit hole and talked about something, and you've got the you've got the baby name app. Yes, I do. So what what am I looking up on the baby name app? Layer. Oh, layer. Yes. So we're going to find out if it's a legit name. I'm like, um, so our daughter Olive has been calling the unborn baby Mola. Yeah. I looked up Mola and we, we there's two alternative spellings, Mola. We, we do it like Lola with an M, M-O-L-A. Yeah. Some people do it like the tooth, so they add an R Yeah, I get that Mola extracted. <laughs> Mola um, is a made-up name according to the baby app. So it's not a real it No, it's not a real exist. name. This is a... Well, that's what you get when you let your three-year-old decide what, the, <laughs> what their new brother and sister is going to be called in the interim. So Leia is most popular in Brazil. Its origin is Hebrew and it means weary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it, according, in, I think this is US, so it was number 279 most popular for girls. Really? Mm -hmm. That's actually not that bad. No, and if you look at what's the other side of it in the US, which is interesting, so two, so that was 279, 280 is a name, which is in the top 100 here in Australia. We've got a friend with a daughter this name, Zara. Yeah, we do. Hmm. Shout out to to Liz, yeah. <laughs> the, the Liz and Chad, and also below that you've got Jane. Above that, just this is you've got um, Kate and Adelaide and Vera. So all really regular names. Oh. So there you go. What about Ray? Is that I E Y? Yeah. Only as a boy's name. Like R, like Ray, like Ray from Ghostbusters, like R A Y. No, no E Y. Really. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You've got Raya. Hmm. Oh, no, actually saying here it's 20% female, but it's coloured blue as Ray. It's not very. It's not in the top. No. There hasn't been a jump of no, Ray's. No, there hasn't from... been a jump of Ray's. That's another one. If you named your daughter Ray, you'd have to, you'd be. You'd be owning it. You'd be, well, you'd be like, well, it's clearly from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we've, you know, we've got like an old Auntie Ray or something like that. <laughs> that you're, uh, yeah, I actually don't mind that name, but again, it's it's a bit too. You know, like I said, like Luke, you could get away with, or Harrison, you could get away with, because yeah, yeah. it's like, well, they're just they're pretty common names. But if you're naming your kid Ray, mm -hmm. <laughs> even more so than Leia, um, yes. Yeah, so you, or well, you potentially could have snuck a Mark in there. Well, my dad's name is Mark. So your middle name's Mark. Yeah, yeah. Look, I like Luke Skywalker, but I wouldn't name him name Mark. <laughs> I, I did, well, could you imagine that if we had a son, I named him Mark, and my dad's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe it!" You, you named him after me. I'm like, "Oh yeah, sure." Actually, it was the guy. And one who, of your best friends is also Mark. So yeah, that's right. I'm just like, nah, sorry guys, it's actually named after the guy who plays <laughs> Luke Skywalker. So not even the character, but the actor no. himself. <laughs> Just want to make that clear before you. <laughs> before anyone gets excited. Yeah, before you get excited, that's well. That's what and my middle name is Mark as well. So yeah. they did. They, mum and dad both did that. So mum, Elise is my sister's middle name is Marita, which is mum's name. So they've kind of. Well, we had our grandparents' put, names, our <clears> middle names. Put themselves in there in the mix, so they've got that all sort of you know locked down just in case. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of other girls in Star Wars. Ray, there's. There's Connix, which is – she's in The Force Way. I think that's her surname, not her first name. That's Carrie Fisher's daughter actually plays. Oh, okay. Billy Lord, which is her real name. And there's Mon Mothma, obviously, and there's uh, Holdo. First names, I'm not great with the – they always, sort of, they always go on the last names, not the first names and stuff. But I don't know. I keep talking about girls' names. We actually don't know. No. Girls' names has been trickier. I think girls' names is tricky because, uh, as you mentioned, we've got an olive. So unless you want to go really, really matchy, it's really – it's crossed out all colour names. So we're not going a scarlet or a violet or a sage or or also botanicals then become quite matchy-matchy. Or foods. Yeah, or foods. <laughs> you can't name a pickle or <laughs> – Yeah, well, Olive was just so like easy. We kind of had that. We had that from the jump. <laughs> we, oh, we had Olive right away, and then it was like, well, that's, it was that's meant to be. That's it, and it was done. I think I was ten weeks pregnant, and we're like, yep, Olive, lock it in. Yeah, and then the boy's name that we kind of had was what we called Olive when she wasn't born, which we was did. which was. I Lion still get people asking, 
do you, would you have really called your son Linus? Like, well, maybe. Like, really? Just tell me really. Like, well, he's like, wait and see. We still could. Linus is, I mean, Linus is out there. People know that we would. We were working there. Yeah, they do. Of, this is not a surprise. But that Linus. actually came. I mean, that did come from Peanuts as well. Linus did specifically come from Peanuts because I love Aww. that name. So I thought you told me a lovely story about that. It was, it was a nice sentimental story as well, not just a Peanuts story. Oh, yeah, that it was that there was a book. I remember being in labour and you're telling me this story. Was it? Yes. Oh, wow, oh, did I? You did, totally. I was definitely, I was gassed up. I was more fiend up. I remember the story. Oh, right, because it was about when, it was like in the 60s and there was a, it was when like Peanuts was its most pop- popular and there's a, a story in Peanuts where Lucy and Linus move away basically and they they get written out of the, or the whole thing is set up that they're going to move away and they, you know, and they don't, they you know, they're going to move out of the town and implying that the characters are going to leave. And there was like these letters that were printed out of people. And there was a woman who wrote to the paper saying that you can't let Linus leave. He's like a son to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, that's a really, yeah, Linus, that's such a good name. That's a good name for a boy. <laughs> and I always, Linus was my favorite character anyway. So that was uh, always what made me think of it. But, but at the time I just have different, and those people that know me, I'm guessing not many of your listeners, but those people that do know me that I'm very much researched, that my background, that, that I'm a psychologist, I love my research, That um, and I certainly did some research on Linus, and it, you know, it's it's up there in the top 50s in some Scandinavian countries. Well, he was in The Bridge as well. Yeah, so if anybody it was has, Linus Yeah, Linus, bridge. so if anybody hasn't seen the greatest TV Damon's show of all time. And character in um, Ocean's Eleven is Linus. Mm, there you go. Yeah, some pop culture. Yeah, so if anybody hasn't seen The Bridge, which is oh, the yeah, greatest TV show of all time, potentially. It's up there. Sega. So good. But, uh, yeah, there was a character called Linus, the Swedish version, not the, not the other versions. No. But, uh, yeah, so when Olive was going through, she, like when she wasn't born, we didn't know we were just calling her Linus. So just like we're calling this one Mola. Mm. So Mola is definitely off the table. <laughs> Linus. <laughs> Olive's made-up name is off the table. Aww. Yeah, no, so no, sorry no about surprise. that. So we do have, um, yeah, we do have a couple of boys' names banked. And Linus is in the mix, but everyone knows Linus is there, so we can kind of – We can really... talk about it. This is not a shock to anyone. Yeah, so – I don't know. Too bad. People have to hold their tongue if, it, if they do, <laughs> if it does end up being Linus, but it definitely won't be Mola. No. Although I did, like, mum the other day was like, oh, yeah, Mola. I'm like, oh, well, you never know Mola. And she's like, what? And I'm like, no, we're not really doing <laughs> Mola is off the table, so don't worry. Maybe they'll do a Star Wars character called Mola. That would be hilarious. If I, uh, I don't know, one day if I ever write a Star Wars story, oh. I don't know why I would, but, you oh, know, I I could, know, you could slide a, you could sl- I would, uh, I'd slide a, uh, a Mola in there somewhere. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Miss Olive reacts because she sings to Mola, she kisses my belly. It's all Mola this, Mola that. Oh, Mola, did you enjoy that mango? Oh, I think you did. Yes, yes, Olive, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the thing that you said that she was doing with the Princess Leia toy the other day where she was talking about... Did you say that she was talking about taking her on an adventure or something like that? She's done it with the Ray one a few times. She's like, come on, Ray, we're going we're going on an adventure. We have to go say rescue people or something like that. <laughs> we need to rescue people that need rescuing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that's Ray all over there. Um, right. Well, we should probably wrap this up. It's getting quite hot in here. It is getting I'm quite hot I just made me thinking like I've got to fix the – we have got windows, but we haven't got fly screen. So we I, could I have put the ceiling fan on. Well, you can't though because it picks up on the mics then. Oh. So that's the trick. You can't. Okay. A lot of podcasts always say how hot it is when they record because ah, you can't. Otherwise, it shows up and it drives people insane. Behind the scenes tips. So what do you um, – do you remember what happened at the end of Last Jedi? Kind Ooh, of. Oh, okay. So, so uh, what do you think is going to happen next? Oh, goodness. I love when you ask people about this. So about whether it will skip ahead in time. I must skip ahead in time, I think. It makes sense to push it. Because my understanding, basically, just from this podcast, is that <laughs> <laughs> this is my limited understanding, um, is that this becomes canon. So the movies are canon, mm-hmm. and so this is the timeline. So if they they will get more bang for buck if they stretch out five years, ten they years, can feel twenty the middle years, bit. yeah. Because then you've got more time where you can have offshoots and other things happening. Because yeah, Last Jedi started. As soon as Force Awakens finished, yeah, it started like the next yeah. day, the yeah. minute, yeah, the next, basically the next minute. Because then we had Kate Johnson on as well. She was kind of, oh, you know, I, love I was, that one. I was, was sort of leading, one, leading the question, going like, "Wouldn't you want it?" And she's like, "Well, I just want to see what happens when you know she's up that hill." I'm like, "Well, well yeah, that'll happen." So I really, actually, I, I must get her that was back on that one. So, so. A big shout out to anyone that's listening to this. That we got quite a little. Bu- we got, we got quite a lot of. Um, I think she, she got a few of her friends to listen to that. We kind of got 
a bit of a spike. Bump. Yeah, a little spike. I mean, we don't have that many listeners anyway, but we did get a Not little... compared to your Peppa Pig one. Yeah, Peppa Pig one's good. Yeah, Peppa Pig <laughs> one's doing much better considering it's only been going for a few weeks. But, you know, we're the only Peppa Pig game in town, the only <laughs> Peppa Pig podcast in town. So okay, it's a lot the easier. World. There's a lot more. And um, so you think that they'll jump ahead? Do you think it'll, Ray, what do you think will happen to Ray in the end? Do you think she'll make it out? She'll save the, save the day? I think so. I think she's the hero we all need. It's very corny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's. Uh, I you'd think, think you'd I be think disappointed that it's if she didn't. I think they'll be, you know, they. Oh, what well, was actually, it? you know, what we haven't touched on. Oh. Is um, your boyfriend Adam Driver? <laughs> 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 He's so attractive. <laughs> you, you were quite quite excited when you found out Adam Driver was. was a being in Star Wars. Something about Adam Driver. I know you've spoken about this in your other podcast. Yeah, I was just episode. like, girls love him. I don't. I mean, I, I think he's a very good actor. He's a pretty, pretty intense dude. He's but... very intense. It's brooding. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> a bit of a Mr. Darcy, Colin Firth about him. I don't know. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. But, yeah, and no, I loved him since he's been in Girls, since whatever that was, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, Holly was the same. My old flatmate, and she was on the item driver train when that started. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, really? That weirdo? And she's like, <laughs> yes. no, you don't get it. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so, do you think he'll make it out, or do you think he's got to go for all? He's got to pay for his bad sin- for his sins. Oh, be interesting to see how that plays out. I'm actually really looking forward to it. That um, what I was going to say before is that thinking back to the um, episode six that it was around – before it was revealed that Luke and Leia are siblings, presumably because you've watched them and not the prequels beforehand, mm. is there was almost that love triangle between, you know, Harrison Ford and Leia or is it Han and Leia and Luke. Mm. There seems like there's this love triangle now with Finn and Ray and the other chick that – what's her name? Oh, Rose. Yeah, Rose. Like, aww. You think she get a little jelly? Yeah, totally. Because uh, everybody keeps thinking that Ray and Kylo are going to get together. You're not buying it, not reading the fan fiction, or oh. <laughs> she, she she hasn't got time for boys. She's too busy saving the galaxy. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe that it makes sense. It's sort of Rose and Finn, and I feel I feel like that's more of the love triangle or the, the equivalent love triangle. Mm. Well, it all depends on where you pick up. You know, like if you, like you said, if you pick up in a few years, they could just be well established, or they could have uh, you know gone their still... separate ways. Or yeah, it seems like a long time to yeah because they they do the. Um, you know, because like the Star Wars finishes and there's a bit of like, you know, Luke's kind of into Leia and Han's sort of teasing her and he obviously he's like, you know, you're a princess and a guy like me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously Empire Strikes Back's where it all kind of they, happens. They, they fall the in love with it. Yeah. But then there's all these like comics and stuff that have come in between the, the two movies where like they spend an enormous amount of time together, all of them. It's like you feel like something probably would have happened by then. Oh, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you go, like it's like two years, and you're spending every five minutes together. And like, like sexual chemistry there. Surely. Yeah, exactly. Like surely you wouldn't surely just wait till the one, like the one, one moment and... that like Luke is off out of the picture for five minutes. I mean, maybe that's what it is. It's like, well, nothing can happen while all three of them are there. Yeah. But anyway, well, we should probably wrap it up because you might go into labour <laughs> at any minute, <laughs> which is potentially could happen. I love that you have you have been very concerned probably the last couple of days and ever since my breathing changes like you know is that a contraction is something going down no yeah it's definitely not the panic station not panic stations but not you're not as on edge second time around yeah I'm considering we went over and we induced anyway like we didn't even have to do like the rush to the hospital or anything that's another whole story but mm. I don't know I feel like you just said like oh yeah all right well we'll you know we'll get there unless something really happens really quickly but I I, I don't know we'll find out. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, do you do any? Do you want to plug any social media stuff? Do you really? Do you kind of on Twitter? You're like a bit of a lurker. <laughs> I used to be. I used to have time for these things. Now I just. I don't have. The, I go through. What stages are you talking about? You're on like pater- maternity <laughs> leave. You've got nothing but time at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, I'm on Instagram, but you know, it's really just it's baby spam, kids spam. I used to be cool. You can go back to my earlier Instagram ones, like, oh, look at the nice things you used to post. <laughs> <laughs> look at all the gigs that you went to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. That's something you can – what's the address? Oh, that's all right. It's, it's KOB999 if you want to see some cute photos or videos of Olive. <laughs> <There you laughs> that's go. pretty much all I'm offering you, fans, yeah. over here. Yeah, well, all the fans. Most of them, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, fans. Uh, and all our stuff is uh, Star Wars Spelt or Star Wars Spelt Out.com. Uh, leave us a review and yeah as you said you can check out the Peppa Pig podcast 
that I do with Highly Matt. recommend. Highly recommend it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one that's taken off. That's the one we've got to hitch our wagon to, I think. <laughs> it's going to put a second story on the, thing <laughs> the, the house. house. Although the other day there was, just before we very finish off, your uh, one of your best friends, Lizzie, we saw the other day and we're talking about the podcast and she just goes, so – how much money do you make from this podcast? <laughs> I've just got money. <laughs> There's no money. It's a labor of love, honey. <laughs> it's a labor of love. It costs money, especially with our audience. And like even the you know the people who put in the the proper hours and produce huge bits of content, you know, still lucky to to get by. But so like the seven year old YouTube. Um, reviewer of toys that earns twenty two million dollars. Yeah, we've got to put Olive to work. I think, I think <laughs> Olive's she... pretty cute. Olive is a, yeah, Olive's the exactly. Story of our house. I think we should. Yeah, it might be the second story on the house. So we'll, we'll follow she's up. She's very on that. vivacious. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Luckily, she's asleep at the moment. Who knows? She's talking about her. Um, all right. Well, I will see you in the lounge room, I suppose. <laughs> when we finish this, I'll probably thank you for having me on. It's been really fun. No problem. And um, we'll have you on post. Yes. Post Mola. Yeah, definitely. Okay, bye. bye.